Hello, everybody, and welcome to Suddenly Saturday. We made it for the weekend. I hope everybody's doing good out there and having a beautiful day. We are going to get into some things tonight. This is my night. It's after midnight. But we are going to get into some things. Um, we had a lot of interesting cards come up, a lot of masculine action cards. This is what we have been training for. This is what we have uh, been talking about, what we're going to go through. The cards are really saying it. Um, always use the card. Don't use uh, tarot cards as like your future prediction. Use tarot cards as a guide to how your life needs to go. Right now, we we just shifted again. We are time jumping. We are we're not we're not realizing it, but I'm seeing it in people, and I'm seeing it myself. And a lot of people uh, are thinking and looking back at the perception they have now versus the perception they had in the past. It's like we're drifting through time and we're looking at things more. And we're seeing that some things were cloudy when we were a child or young and we didn't see the things that we thought we seen. But now as we're older and looking back, it's like it's it's like a memory. It's like a time where you're drifting through and you're re-looking at things and re-examining re things. That's called the dark night of the soul. That's part of it. Uh, when you say the dark night of the soul, people are like, oh my goodness. It's, it's not bad. It, it, I mean, it can be bad when you go through some of the dark history that you've went through. But everything is a learning. Everything, a lot of the trauma and the things that you go through, it levels you up. You can look at that trauma and those things and what did it teach you? Um, there was always a lesson in something. So uh, I keep, now I keep hearing the song Wheel in the Sky. I don't know why, but I keep hearing that. And um, I keep seeing George Bailey on It's a Wonderful Life. Uh I always love that Christmas show. That is one of my favorite. And uh, I liked it so much because he felt like he was a nothing, like his life didn't matter. And he was able to look at his life from a perspective of if he was never there, what would that life be like for everybody that loved him and was around him? It would be completely different. So I'm getting that and I'm just seeing a lot of different things. I'm seeing people that are really starting to relook at things and realize that not everything was fact, that there was a lot of fiction and everybody's starting to research and learn what is actually fact. And I seen something very interesting tonight and I think we might start to see a lot more of this and I have no idea what it is but it was someone on tv I was at a friend's house and I even called her and I said what was that show you were watching it was like some kind of game show and she said it was password <laughs> there was a gentleman on there that and I didn't say it uh the one friend I was sitting there there was two people sitting there and they're looking at it <laughs> and I was thinking it and the one woman says, she says, he looks like an alien. <laughs> and the other one says, yeah, he really does look like an alien. And she says, he's got pointy ears. <laughs> like, I'm glad you guys said it. And I didn't because it was, I mean, it literally looked like something seen on Star Trek. The guy was bald. It almost looked like he had one of those bald things put over his head like actors and actresses do because she said, it was like a darker color up here. So he was bald and he had pointy, pointy ears. Literally, they pointed up here like an elf. So, and he didn't look normal. So I don't know what that was. And we're, I think we're going to start to see <laughs> strange things. We got to be prepared. Okay. Now let's get into the cards before we get into strange. I think the next thing that's going to come is the 
fake alien invasion, you know, Project Blue Beam. Uh, there were already, I was on Mr. Uh, BB333 today, and he showed this the storms that just came through. Wow, the storm, we had massive wind here in Florida, and a lot of people, there was tornadoes, there was all kinds of stuff. For like two, two days, yeah, one, two, today was the third day, we still had a little wind in the morning, but it, it calmed down. We woke up on, what day was that? Thursday. It was windy on Wednesday. We woke up on Thursday and our whole front yard was flooded. I mean, we could have, we could have went fishing. <laughs> our neighbor says, yeah, you had a pool over there. It was great. And by the next day it was down. It always does that. Once in a blue moon, we got so much rain. I mean, instantaneously. Wind was just blowing like crazy. Uh, but I did find something interesting tonight. I was watching, um, I was looking at something on Telegram. And I seen this thing. It was a government patents that started in 1891 to 2023. And in 1891, the first patent that they did was the Rainmaker patent. And they have all kinds of patents on fog, foggy mist, Rainmaker, cloud maker. Uh, the black clouds are to hide planes. So there is like a list of things that they have been doing since 18 something. Tell me we did not have the technology back then. I want anybody who even hasn't watched it, I want you to go on and watch a few of the Jetsons cartoon. It's a cartoon. I think it was 1967 the Jetsons were on. And they had the big screen TVs that hang on the wall and people project themselves on. They had flying cars. They had all that. So did we. So who hit it? Hmm. Interesting. When's it coming back? Soon. Can't wait. All the tech, hidden technology, all of it, the med beds, the healing frequencies, all of it were all energy. Coffee and cards with Fawn tonight, channeling. I've been channeling like a nut. And pay attention to your dreams. Pay attention to your channeling. You're going to start to get all kinds of stuff. Now, what have we, um, before I read these cards, because these cards are going to tell us something tonight. Um, We have to be ready for this. This is, I think the gut punch is coming up. Something is going to try right now the, we can't fear don't fear i heard the in new york and the cities and stuff stay away from wildlife they're talking about bird flu pandemic and it's not going to work we've known about it for a long time it, it probably will work to people that have no clue but it's just a fear tactic that is what they love they love to get our adrenaline going and it's fear and pain and sadness and yada yada so right now we have to pull the light out and we have to be the light we have to be the <sighs> lighthouse in the storm because we've been working on self reflecting dark night of the soul manifesting all of it going within intuition, knowledge, earth school, mystery school. We've been going through all of it. Take little bits and pieces, the stuff that you really gra grasped. Take that because that's what you were supposed to grasp. Leave the rest behind if you're not, if you're not jiving with it. It wasn't meant for you. It might've been meant for somebody else because we're all unique and we're all different. We all have our journey and we're going to go on a journey tonight. Because this journey is going to give us some information of what's to come and what to be prepared for. So, okay, there are some other things I need to go over. We're playing a game right now. And I want people to work on manifestation. Manifestation does work, and it's been working for me and my husband a lot lately. A lot. We just say it out in, in loud, and it's been coming true. So I want you to work on it. Uh, we're doing the hit the like button. We're calling it the magic manifestation button. I want you to think of something significant 
in your life that you would try to like to try to manifest. And when you do that, I want you to hit the like button or put it in the comment. I just want to know how many people are playing with their uh, inner child and their manifestation, because that is very important. It's almost like Peter Pan. You remember like Robin Williams and the Peter Pan when he went to Neverland, he couldn't see the food because he couldn't use his imagination and his manifestation techniques. They showed you in Peter Pan and they said, don't you remember, Peter? And he didn't remember. But then they started throwing food and this and that. And he started to see it because he started to use his manifestation and go into his uh, inner child and play. And we really need to do that. I mean, it can't be all um, serious. We have to play with our our talents and see what we're good at. So I want we want to do that. And I'm also giving to my subscribers and people that stop in and visit. Uh, in the comments, I want you to put your first name and the month you were born and the day you were born. That way, if there's two patties, I know which patty I draw. At the end of the month, my husband's going to draw out of a hat, mag magic hat. And I am going to give a free reading to one of my listeners. And uh, that's all you have to do. Put that in and I will, I read all the comments and I answer all the comments and I will tell you you're entered and I will write your name down in my little magic book. So I manifested some information and I wanted to tell you guys about it. We have to, uh, the silver and gold is going up and what's going to happen, I think, with the silver, if you didn't buy physical silver say you bought silver bonds and they sold and sold and sold a bunch of them <laughs> they're out of silver i think they're selling these bonds they're selling too many and then it's going to burst the bubble on the silver is going to burst years ago start buying silver it's not too late it's almost at 30 dollars now it's when i bought it oh gosh i bought it I think back in 2020, when we were, they were talking about it. I was watching some of the money people and they said, buy silver and gold. And they said, if you can't afford gold, which a lot of people can't stock up on silver. So that's what you want to do because silver is going to go, it's going to ricochet. It, in, in the years and years ago, people used to give like five, 10 gold ounces for one ounce of silver. Silver used to be more worth more than gold. And I have a feeling it's going to go that way again. We use a lot of silver in a lot of things. So there's so much going on out there, literally so much. So let's get into this reading. I've covered everything and uh, I want to start this reading. And I just want when you're thinking, when you're listening to this, I want you to really think about what I'm saying. Because I've seen a lot of action masculine cards in this reading. And I have this feeling that we need to use a lot of our masculine right now energy. Um, today is 413 of 2024. It's a 16, which goes down to a 7. And I am going to read the 7. Number seven indicates that you should only trust the magic of your heart. You will be given the gift of a light that makes a deep connection between you and the mysteries of life. Over the next few days, fill your soul path with love even more than usual. Love every moment, love everything, and love everyone. And you will become the magic of your heart. The energy field of the number seven is like a gateway of light. It is death, birth, magic, light, and completion of a stage in life. Number seven brings new soul paths. Yeah, we're going on some new soul paths. We're meeting all kinds of beautiful people. And you know what? I'm going to start a different way today because usually the other way it starts, but I'm going to mix things up, step out of the box, stretch my feet out, play with my inner child. We're going to start on the Soul Helper Oracle. This is a great one to start with because... She told us something today. Uh, this is a, one of my favorite books. I got every, they're all my favorite, my husband says. So, okay, I lied. They're all my favorite, but I really love this one because each card shows and tells a story. And that's why I like Oracle. 
versus tarot. I love stories that they tell. It's like, it's explaining it better to me. We got an eight, unity, infinity. And it says, live in this world as a dreamer, create a future paradise. And look at her. She has the butterfly on her shoulder, the flowers in her hair, the white, and she's just daydreaming. She's actually in her perfect, perfect paradise, just dreaming. The dreamers of the world are active creators of their own lives and futures in close touch with their imagination and inventiveness. A powerful creative potential awaits each of us when we tap into these aspects of ourself. With its perfectly balanced energy, each daydream has the potential for fulfillment. There is no ego and no relentless desire, just the pure feeling of dreaming itself. Dreamers are deeply connected with their own magic, whether they are aware of it or not. When they dream, they let go of everything and enter a space where only magic exists. Keep your bold, brave, and beautiful dreams safe in your heart. They are worth more than all the riches of the world. Dream with every fiber of your being for the benefit of all living creatures. It is your mission, indeed, your responsibility, to imagine in your dreams a world like a paradise. Dream a better world for us all, such a world can ultimately only be created by those capable of imagining it. This is the ancient cosmic law of analogy. As within, so without. Only what is within us can be manifested in the outside world. Give your dreams and the imagined images you see in your mind's eye even greater power by experiencing them more intensely so that they can guide you towards your potential. This card indicates that you are in a time in which dreams have more creative power than ever before. Your feelings and emotions are the magic that will make your dreams come true more quickly. Make use of their light and give in to your dream. Dream a paradise for all living things. Visualize it every day and intensify these dreams with the helpers suggested. Your helpers for the next 21 days, the power animal is the otter. The herbal essence is sandalwood. Healing crystal is the marquee marbles. And the number is eight. I love that card. Okay. The number eight tells you that now is the time for harmony, calm, and a place of retreat. You have been given the gift of a light that opens your mind and delivers the strength to create something that will last for all time. Should you want to do so, number eight's energy field opens up eternity for you. It is renewal, paradise, spirituality, calm, mindfulness, and the completion of transformation. Um, I really like that meaning for us because we are getting ready to be in a completion of a transformation. It is gonna be amazing. And I can't wait. And I'm going to read a couple more before I dig into the other one. I am going to mix things up tonight a little bit. Now we've got the messenger oracle. We got nurture all you love. And this is a beautiful blue dragon with gold horns. And he's got like a crystal ball. Take the time to nurture the things you care about so that they may flourish and grow. Your hopes, your dreams, your body, your mind, your spirit, your creations, and your relationship, all that is you need, all that is you needs to be cherished, loved, honored, and respected. Without care and attention, these aspects of self can fall into a stage of neglect that does only harm to both you and the world around you. Nurture them, and they will bring you peace and fulfillment. Um, I want everybody to start trying to really uh, go on the the dark night of the the the, sh the dark night of the soul journey, because it it will not only release you from past experiences and kind of open 
your eyes to things that you thought were what they were and they're not, it will also release you from that because you have to go back and see what you learned, even from traumatizing things. There was things that you learned from everything because we have to have a positive and negative. We can't just have all positive because you won't learn nothing. And we are leveling up in wisdom, all of us. That's how we do it, Earth school. So then we got uh, with love and kindness. And uh, she is beautiful. Pink and green, an act of loving kindness has the power to change a life. It can leave a lasting impression, restore faith, and give hope to someone who has none. Understand that this world does not need more people bent on personal success. What it does need are more people who are, are more willing to be kind rather than right. Um, I was just talking about that. I said to my husband, I said, we are supposed to work on this. I have no idea what that was that just fell. I have no idea what that was. Um, what I want to say is about this card, and I want to reread it because everybody really needs to grasp this card. Now, I want to reread this, and I want you to really think about it when I'm saying this. An act of loving kindness has the power to change a life. It can leave a lasting impression, restore faith, and give hope to someone who has none. Understand that this world does not need more people bent on personal success. What it does need are more people who are more willing to be kind rather than right. Um, yeah, we really need to think about that because that is what we need. Um, there's a lot of people that are trying to help people. I I am one of them. I am trying to help people, um, guide people in what they need to do right now. Um, whether I'm right or wrong, they'll get the little pieces of the, the journey and the treasure that they need. And they'll discard the rest because they didn't need it. Somebody else might have. Um, that's what it's all about. It's service to others. Yes, we're supposed to work on ourselves because if we don't work on ourselves, we can't change the world. But it's also supposed to be service to others. That's why you see people walking around in pain and crying and losing their homes and things like that. And everybody thinks, well, they just don't want to work. Well, what if they got foreclosed on? What if because they couldn't pay something. Somebody got sick and they just didn't have money. We don't know their stories. So on our quest to be the best, um, we need to slow down a little bit and think of who we're helping and what we're doing. You know, my husband said to me, because my husband's seen a little different something. He's going through the dark night of the soul and he's seeing different things. And he said, you know, because I never realized how, how bad you were hurting because of my family going through, you know, the illnesses and stuff, but I hide a lot. I don't cry a lot. I just keep it inside. And when I come on here, it really helps me to just get out of my shell, to just let it go because this is what I love. I love helping people. Um, and he said, you know, I see these things on Facebook a lot. He said that the person that is trying to help people are the ones that are hurting most inside. He said, that reminds me of you. And I said, well, everybody is hurting inside some way or shape or form. And you can't go burden everyone with all your problems. You have to just try to help, just try to get through it. And that's what we need to really do. We need to be strong right now because there's going to be a lot of people that need us. So now is the time for us to pull in our shine and put our uh, warrior on. The last card we got on this one is Calm in the Storm. And I love this card. There are times when life offers us nothing but chaos and turmoil. Wave upon wave knocks us down, sometimes before we can regain our feet. Be still, take a moment to breathe, express your thoughts and feelings, and then do what you can do. Find a peaceful place of calm within you. If another is in need, 
offer them a safe harbor, be a port in the storm. Yeah, we're going to have to be a port in the storm for people. Um, and whatever you might do, it, it'll be unique in your own way, what you're supposed to do. Okay, now I'm going to save the rest for later, and I'm going to go to the dreams of God. Because there's a lot of things the dreams of Gaia wants to tell us. Um, the first one we did get was the six of earth. And I find this very interesting because this is family, community, providence, protection, dependability, responsibility, duty, service, self-sacrifice. I was just talking about. Responsibility and duty to family, give love, care, and support, lead by example, a time of sharing, learn about nature, important matters need attention, protect the animals, forests, and oceans, help for the right reason. Yeah, it, it really, we really need to step up to the plate right now. The six of earth reminds us of our responsibilities and duties to our family especially the younger members, it asks us to be selfless and in service to those who are in need or dependent on us for love, care, and support. If you have children, it is your responsibility to provide them with a home that is safe and free from potential harm. It is your duty to provide for their physical and emotional needs, love and shelter them. As a parent, it is your responsibility to set a good example and be a role model to those around you. Educate them, teach them to be truthful, respectful, and to do unto others as they would have others do unto them. Teach them about life outside the home, of nature, of the world they dwell on, and their role as a custodian and caretaker of this big blue green planet. Teach by word and deed, lead by example. If you have no children, the sixth of earth comes to remind you that it is your responsibility to both humanity and Gaia to become the best person you can be. Help where and when you can in your community. Teach and share your knowledge whenever possible. Lead by example and be responsible for your words and deeds within the border community. Look out into the world and understand that we share this planet and its resources and each of us needs to do what we can to protect the animals, forests, and oceans. All of us have a duty of care to both family and the environment. While the six of earth represents responsibility and duty of care overall, it can also signify that there is a matter that needs to be taken care of in the present. If this is the case, do not forget and do not delay. Um, I always like this uh, card because he's at work. They used to put those over their shoulders and carry stuff on them. And he's got chains on. He's got his lunch. But as you can see, he's got the key in the lock. He can take it off at any time. He's showing responsibility, and it's it's hard work, but he is very responsible. Um, with that, we got the Knight of Swords, and that is drama. The Knight of Swords is action-driven knight in the troublesome suit of swords, brings a whirlwind of drama. Confrontations, unexpected blocks, disruptions to plans, and interrelationship insecurity and arguments. You have a right, you have a fight on your hands. And there's little you can do to avoid the upheaval it brings. On the plus side, you'll know exactly with what and whom you are dealing with. Avoid being drawn into drama more than is necessary. Try not to take this setback personally. It's their fight, not yours. Battles, confrontation, stress, unstoppable forces, manipulation, immaturity, and instability. Be careful with that. That is a warning that it's like family or uh, around you that you're trying to take care of things, but you have this right here that is, uh, yeah, he's, he's just drama. So be careful with that. Don't get pulled into it. Okay, now... 
we have the eight of air. We've got this card a lot, and I want you to really think about these cards that are coming out. Uh, we have a lot going on in this world right now, and I think this is going to tell us what is going awry around us, the, the little war that's around us. The ego, truth, power, responsibility, consequences, cause and effect, lessons learned, and memory. Ego does not always tell the truth. Effects will always follow cause. Time to change your ways. Admit that you made a mistake. Memory is imperfect. Self-justification does not mitigate harm. Consequences are inescapable. We all make mistakes. We are creatures driven by our ego. Our ego is in part our identity, the center of our consciousness. It is driven by our instincts and base desire and constrained by culture and society. It can have us feeling confident and certain, or it can have us feeling uncertain and afraid. It can also employ one of several defense mechanisms to shield us from uncomfortable truths or a reality that we are not willing or ready to accept. So many of us are afraid of the truth. We can be so afraid of the truth that our ego will work hand in hand with our primal instinct and do what it can to protect us. If our ego is wounded or we have been taught to fear the defense mechanism employed may also be detrimental to good health, well-being, and to our relationships with others. Our need to feel safe, to feel good, to be right, to be better, to be needed, and to be loved can result in the evidence at hand, reality, being distorted and shaped to fit our perspective of events so that what we want to believe is in conflict with fact, in the process of acquiring knowledge and understanding through thought, experience, and the sense, cognitive dissonance is a conflict that arises when an individual attempts to hold on to conflict, beliefs, or thought processes at the same time. That conflict can give rise to mental, emotional, and physical discomfort, especially when our actions and our reasons for behaving in a particular manner or with our natural sense of right and wrong and the moral code we are taught by those around us. Practicing a behavior that does harm smoking or overeating, for example, can give, can give rise to cognitive dissonance. The desire to continue doing something that everybody knows and cannot deny is harmful is rejected by a belief that it, it benefits the individual more than it harms them. Their parents or grandparents may have smoked for decades with no apparent ill effects, or the individual may come from a long line of overweight people who all live long, happy lives. The act of smoking helps one to keep their weight under control, while the act of eating makes the other feel sated and peaceful. There is an emotional or psychological hook, and so they continue, even though their choice to do so could result in their chronic ill health even death. What they have is an addiction, and what their mind attempts to do is to make them feel good about the fact that they refuse to give up their addiction. They know and understand the potential consequences of their choices to continue, but refuse to consider them or choose to ignore them, responding in a defensive manner when those consequences are raised. However, the conflict that arises can be dispelled by doing one of several things accept reality and then make changes in one's life in accordance to that truth or by the continued use of self-justification and other defense mechanisms in order to make ourselves feel better continue to do something or believe something that is doing us or other others harm the self-justification and rationalization increases our self-esteem and allows us to see through thoughts and actions in a favorable light. Nobody likes to think poorly of themselves, and so our ego acts to protect 
us by creating reason and excuses to justify our actions. This is natural and normal behavior. We do, we do it at some time or other, but while we can embrace a natural and normal state of denial, we are likely to escape the consequences of our actions. We can deny and suppress, we can rationalize and we can justify that every action gives rise to a consequence and those consequences can be both favorable or not. If you do something that you consciously or unconsciously know to have a potential harmful consequence and you choose to ignore it or believe that it won't manifest, then the aid of error comes to caution you to think again. There is a price to be paid for all that you do. No matter your reason or your intentions and you alone are responsible for the consequences born of your actions. In everything you do, cause and effect will play out. It is inevitable and the consequences unavoidable. The eight of air is a very ch eight of air is a very challenging card because it symbolizes the need to look at your beliefs and behaviors and question them. Are you hiding from an uncomfortable reality? It is time to take responsibility for your thoughts, actions, and consequences. They give rise to and to see them for what they really are. It is a time to be humble and accept that you might have projected your feeling about yourself onto others. Have you made a mistake or cho chosen a path or beliefs that have not served you well? And instead of accepting this painful truth, allowing your ego to weave a reality that allows you to pretend it is time to face the facts. Don't worry about losing face by admitting to your humanity, contrary to the beliefs that others will think less of you. In most situations, a simple apology in admitting that you made a mistake or have been protecting yourself from a harsh truth will earn people's respect. Therefore, accepting that maybe you don't know as much as you think you do. Therefore, accepting that hiding behind a false reality created by ego that serves only to make you feel good, but do not blame yourself or allow a wounded ego make you think poorly of yourself. We all make mistakes. We all at one time or another try to deny rational, not rationalize and justify our actions and behaviors. Every single one of us it is an inher inherently human trait. Our egos will instinctively work to protect us, but sometimes we have to accept that our egos don't always have us do the healthy, right, and honorable thing. Take this opportunity to take charge of your life. Embrace your personal power by learning from your mistakes so that you grow in wisdom and awareness. Be humble and accept the truth that your ego is not always honest and you are not always right. Your ego might have your best interest at heart, but it will offer self-justification in order to make you feel good about your behavior, in order to protect you from the harsher truth that your actions may have misguided or harmful. The path to enlightenment is made up of our mistakes and the lessons learned from them along the way. Wisdom is earned, not bestowed. Yeah, uh, like I said, I hate when somebody says, I'm just old. No, you have leveled up. You have went through earth school that many years. You know more than most people. So never say that uh, I'm too old. We're never too old. Um, that is just something that we have been meant to be been led to believe. So, yeah, we got to be careful with that now. And this is almost basically choice, too. His one hand has the knife in it bleeding, and the other hand has the knife up, and he's holding on to the handle. So there's two different choices he could make. Does he sacrifice for someone and make himself bleed? Or does he take the ego trip out and let just let the sword stand up so somebody falls on it? So, yeah, there's kind of a choice. It's kind of a choice card, too. It's a good card, but it makes you think about things. Now, uh, with that one, we got the number 15. We got the vortex, temptation. So that's part of the ego trip, too, the temptation. 
Caught in a vortex spinning out of control, a mermaid and merman reach for the ocean surface, struggling against an unfathomable force. They cannot see the source of the vortex. It may be a storm at sea, a hurricane, or a cyclone, but its power over them feels absolute. Yet the water outside the funnel of the vortex, a symbol of emotional turmoil, appear calm and unaffected by their struggle. The vortex reveals that you have become trapped. You may be enslaved by a job, a financial contract, or love and lust. A common meaning of the vortex is affairs. This situation means you feel you have little power and that another person or other parties have control over you. You may be feeling attracted to a person or situation that will do you no good. For this reason, an additional meaning of the vortex is addiction to substances or to love itself. However, your bondage is an illusion. You can decide to break free whenever you choose. If you decide it's time to break an agreement or habit, do it. It'll be easier than you think. Don't let your circumstances dictate who you are. Take back your power. This is choices, contracts, control, power, affairs, restriction, and addiction. Yeah, uh, it's time to take back our power. So whatever you're addicted to, whatever you're tweaking on, whatever ego you got, you got to relook at it. Look at it from a different perception. As we say, the eagle's perception, we always get that card. Uh, look at it at a different angle because sometimes you'll see different things. Okay, the other one we got was the two of air, duality, polarity, separation, unity, integration, choice, and the big picture. Uh, everything has an opposite. Duality divides and separates. Polarity unites and integrates. When you create, you also destroy. Embrace an open mind. Nothing is ever black and white. A choice between uh, a choice between right and wrong. I mean, you got to think about that. Sometimes both parties can be right. Uh, this is this represents both duality and polarity and the theory that everything is created has an opposite. It does. A magnet is worthless without the other part of it. Um, we need to, everything right here is pointing to choice. This is choice. This is choice. This is choice. I mean, three choices kind of in a row and basically they're air. Um, I don't need to read polarity. We all know what polarity is. It's positive and negative. It's it. We have to have it. They can be both right and wrong. Um, we don't have to prove we're right all the time. It's it's ridiculous how people have to prove and prove and prove that they're right. OK, so you're right. Walk away. Uh, either way, it really doesn't matter. It's your opinion anyway. I mean, we're all going to figure out what's right and wrong, but some of it's people's opinions. Now, um, on the polarity one, we got the Four of Swords, and that's recovery. Now is the time for a break, which may be your choice or imposed upon you as you take time away from work a relationship or a stressful commitment. This quiet time is necessary. An opportunity to look after yourself, rest, recuperate, and enjoy a gentler pace of life. The four always shows that some plans go on hold. Accept that this is how things need to be just now. You will make progress when the time is right. In action, time away, take a relationship break, healing, peace, stillness, and rest. Yes. Tomorrow's my day. I think it's supposed to be nice out. I am going to take an hour out, lay in the sun, and meditate. I really need it. I'm exhausted. I'm tired. I'm spent. <laughs> I've had enough. And we'll already have our suddenly Saturday out. So I won't miss you guys. You won't miss me. I'll be there. But... I'm going to take, I, I need to do meditation. I keep saying it is so important. So, so important. Uh, do as much meditation as you possibly can, even if it's 5, 10, 15 minutes. Whatever you can get into it. Clear your mind. Tomorrow, I really need to clear my mind. <clears throat> it's a good day to clear my mind. Now, we got the 
four of water, but we got the four of otter. Okay. <laughs> and we got the otter, animal otter. Um, the four of uh, water was reversed. This card is, I love this card, because if you look at the card, there's two different faces in that thing he's holding. And his face is scarred. He's got an eye missing. His face is really scarred. Uh, and in it's got the third eye over the two faces. So yeah, this is a really cool card. But it is a potential blockage. You are worthy and deserving of all that you dream of. But remember, so is everyone else. What if you jo if your joy comes at the expense of another person? Can you stand tall and proud and have respect for yourself if your happiness carries the price of another person's heartbreak or failure? Can you take genuine delight in your circumstances? Unintentional actions that cause hurt are one thing and can be forgiven. But what of the emotional consequences of an act done with awareness and intent? Four of water, when it appears reversed, cautions you against vanity, arrogance, selfishness, and self-importance and symbolizes a need to look yourself in the eyes. Are you about to choose a path that leads to another's distress or downfall? If the answer is yes, be mindful of the fact that the universal law of cause and effect will hold court and sit in judgment. As always, there will be reward and consequences offered if you choose if your choice is to continue forward, knowing that you may bring emotional anguish to another, be sure that the reward is far greater than the price you may end up paying. Yeah, that's a that's like a kind of a karma thing, you know. I mean, if you are at a crossroads, don't do it. You still have the opportunity to answer no and have your actions reflect that choice. We really have to watch that right now. There is a lot of people hurting out there. Um, I've heard a lot of distress in people's voices where other people didn't hear that. They're just like rolling their eyes like more drama. I'm not worried about this person. I'm not worried about, but something is really, it was really heartfelt. I mean, we really have to listen to stuff. God, people, our problems aren't at the top of everybody's list. Everybody has problems. Okay, so somebody's listening to you, but they're screaming out to you to listen to them. So we really have to relook at some things. We did get the page of cups with that as a clarifier, and it's imagination. Um, listen to your dreams, uh, play with your imagination, uh, because if we if we don't play with our imagination once in a while and we just stay in adult mode all the time, life will be draining. It really will. A young person or someone who is young at heart has much to offer you and others. Good company, fun, and friendship. He or she also brings you the message that love is coming your way in the future. When this page arrives in a reading, your creative projects will also flourish and so will your finances. Enjoy the lighter side of life. Always allow yourself time to play and let your imagination run free. This is companionship, outings, fun, playfulness, imagination, love, news, news and finances. Uh, that is a perfect way to end that part of the reading. Um, now, we also have the practical magic. And with the practical magic, we got a number 26, which is an eight. We've got the infinity symbol quite a few times today. Follow your dreams, dream like. Your subconscious is trying to tell you something important. Get a good night's sleep so you can fall into the swirling patterns of your brain. Dreaming is synonymous with magic and self-discovery and is vital to your existence and happiness. It's important in a superficial sense in that it allows you to process and release any stress or drama you're holding on to. Many dreams make no sense when you wake up. 
because they were just your brain defragmenting from the day, filling, filing away the memories and experiences it wants to keep and ditching the rest. But you can also gain deep insight from your dreams, drawing forth knowledge from your subconscious. If something is bothering you in your waking life, it can be dealt with in the dream state. Answers to problems are often buried, and when you dream, you allow them to come to the surface and reveal themselves. Everyone dreams, even if you think you don't. It just means you don't recall them, which is common. If you go to bed so tired that you that you move quickly through all the sleep cycles and fall into a deep sleep, there's a reason sleep dep dep deprivation can lead to hallucinations. Yeah, uh, you got to get a good night's sleep, seriously. You need to dream in order to process your day, manufacture memories, learning survival techniques, understanding who you are, why you're here, and where you're going. So if you're not dreaming at night, you'll do it during the day while half awake. Drawing this card is a message that your subconscious is trying to show you something, so you need to pay attention. Writing down your dreams and exploring the messages your subconscious sends you, you while you're sleeping is a great way to decode your own wisdom and find solution to the issues you face. Information, emotions, and answers to problems are often buried deep within the subconscious, and dreaming will allow them to come to the surface of the subconscious, subconscious of the conscious mind. By recording your dreams each night, you'll not only see patterns emerging and work out their significance, but also train yourself to remember them so you can better utilize the wisdom they impart. If you're having nightmares, pay attention to them. They may be trying to alert you to a problem you need to resolve, such as an emotional situation you're struggling with or a health issue you should get checked. Daydreaming can also be a useful tool, for it is in th these idle moments that hidden truths emerge. When you switch off your conscious brain and allow your mind to drift, thoughts flow fluidly in a kind of stream of consciousness. Unexpected connections can be made leading to inspiration and it's sometimes you're already doing scientists have discovered that we spend between 25 and 60 percent of our waking life in this mind-wandering undirected thought process it's not all helpful or inspired some daydreaming is just rehashing a conversation to figure out how you could have dealt with it better reminding yourself of all the tasks you have to do or wondering what you'll make for dinner that night, like the less useful brain. Dumps of sleeping dreams you don't remember. But some daydreaming leads to insightful creative ideas that seem to hit you from out of the blue. That sudden spark of inspiration, that resolution to a work issue, that flash of perception about your relationship. It often comes as a surprise because logic has been abandoned in favor of your mind's vague wanderings, yet so much is going, going on below the surface that you're just not conscious of. So get rid of the guilt for supposedly wasting time and honoring your waking dreams too. If nothing else, your brain needs some downtime from the constant stimulus and barrage of sound, sight, and stresses. And who knows what you'll dream up then dream into being when you allow yourself the freedom. Yeah, uh, we have to sleep. Sleep is very important and dreams are, dreaming is very important. I've learned a lot of things off of dreams. Okay, we've got the Angels and Ancestors Oracle. I've got a few cards on this one. The first one we got, which, do you remember I had that dream the other day where I had like blue around my, my mouth and I had like a white wig on? I don't know what the white wig on, but look at his mouth. That's how it was on my mouth. I don't know what the white wig had to do with anything, but he doesn't have a white wig on, but this is warrior, be fearless and stand strong. And right now that is what we have to do. 
Don't back down. Make your opinions heard. Don't settle for second best. Inspired by the Mora, the indigenous people of Atura, New Zealand, this card summons the warrior within. A warrior is anyone who is ready and willing to know themselves and do what needs to be done in order to get where they want to be. In this deck, the warrior embodies fierce primal love. The warrior within, the energy you can call on to protect yourself. Even if you don't think you love yourself, if you are exposed to a situation that could be harmful or dangerous, the steps you take to protect yourself are in fact acts of fierce love. The warrior within is made of light and has the capacity to shine even more brightly when facing darkness, darkness head on. If you're experiencing fear at this time, know that this means whatever is going on is important to you. Whenever you feel fear, you are on the verge of something big, perhaps a massive breakthrough that is going to really help you move forward. If you have a situation on your hands where you have to face someone or something that's been unsettling, know that you are being guided to call up your inner warrior. Don't falter and don't be frightened because you have the energy to protect yourself now and at all times. Yeah, I think we need to uh, call that inner warrior out right now. We're going to need it for the next few months because there's going to be a lot of things going on out there. And I have this feeling friends and family are going to be freaking out but have no idea what's happening. So you have to be the light, the lighthouse in the storm. We got the night, be brave and honest. A lot of the be brave and the ego and the service to others, it's all been coming up today. Do the right thing, even if it isn't the easiest option. Stand for what you know to be right and true. The knight is a knight in shining armor dedicated to the crown that his sword defends inspired by the Knights of Templar. He is a protector of the Holy Grail and therefore of your spiritual growth and expansion. He represents the warrior in you. Whether you are male or female, that energy is within you. His sword and armor show he is courageous and strong. But if you look closely, you will see he has a, a tear running down his face, showing his willingness to be vulnerable and his love for what he protects. The energy of respect is important right now. You're being encouraged to figure out what is important to you and what you stand for. If you are in a space where there's opposition, you are being guided to follow through with integrity because even if it seems this will slow your progress, your rewards will be much more abundant. You are being surrounded by a light of bravery to help you. This card also brings justice. If you are longing for justice, please know that the universal <laughs> energies are working to bring everything back in order and that you don't need to force anything through with your will. If you have made any mistakes recently, it's important to take ownership of them so that you can align yourself with improving the situation. If you are feeling the need to defend your spiritual path at this time, back down and let it protect you yeah you know we don't have to defend what we're doing to anybody if they don't like what you're doing it's their opinion they're allowed to have their opinion but you need to know if you feel it in your heart in the christ conscious within then you know you're going the right way that's all we got the high priestess intend and create and basically we are creating we're creating the heaven on earth Recognize that you have the power to change your life, face your fear, and align with the light. In many traditions, the high priest is a physical embodiment of the divine masculine. He acts as a bridge between worlds and is able not only to divine, to divine the future, but to help create it, to inspire by ancient Egyptians. This priest is the divine consort to the high priestess. He is de depicted with a hawk, which is sacred to the Egyptian 
Egyptians and holding a wand of Anubis, the Egyptian guide to the underworld. The high priest is always spiritually connected and disciplined with great respect for his creator and his particular practice. In a reading, this card can represent a spiritual figure, leader, or teacher in your life or in an aspect of your path that has led you to where you are today. You are a bridge between heaven and earth, and it's important for you to know that you are more powerful and connected than you may think. Everything you are given attention and energy to at this time is creating your way forward. There, there have been some setbacks, but accept, accept these are experiences that have led you to a deeper understanding of yourself and your spirit. Know that you are being guided by the ancestors to direct your thoughts and energies towards what you want to grow, heal, and expand, and then watch it happen right before your eyes. Ooh, that's a good card. Okay, now... I have the Gateway of Light Activation. We actually got two cards with that, so I am going to read those two cards. We usually only get one, but uh, we did get two. Okay, now the first card that we got was the Gaia Gateway Activation. Learning Experience, Wisdom Transmission, and Earth Intelligence. The Gaia Gateway is the chakra that connects us directly with the mind and intelligence of Mother Earth. This chakra is not very well known, but it's now being acknowledged as one of the key energetic spaces we can connect with to activate the ascension process. For many years, ascension has been thought of as moving beyond the limitations of the body and transcending the physical realm. But it is, in fact, the process of becoming present in the body, in full awareness of the spirit within. The Gaia Gateway is found below our feet under the Earth Star Chakra. But when we're connected to it, it is best to imagine it in the center of the Earth. The best way to describe it is a wormhole or portal in the center of the Earth that allows us to connect directly with the non-physical intelligence of Gaia and the spiritual presence of planet Earth. The Earth is a highly spiritual, intelligent, aware being. She has lived through many challenges and experiences that have led her to where she is today. No matter what has been served up to her or how many of us have mistreated her, she has found a way to survive and thrive. Sometimes it is not our role to know how everything will unfold. When you draw this card, it's a reminder to trust the plan. The wisdom of Gaia is with you at this time, and you can enjoy the natural expansion that is taking place. You may have a tendency to go traveling and look to the stars for answers, but realize that the planet you call home has much to offer too. You have chosen to be here. This may not be easy to accept, especially if your current reality is a harsh one, but your current experiences are vital for your growth. The earth herself cannot escape the challenges that she is facing at this time. Learn from her strength. Learn from her yearning for a better future. Come back to her. She is your chosen home. I love that card. That is a great card. Um, we also got the heart of source all-encompassing love, unconditional acceptance, serenity. I got this card, I think it was the first reading I did, and I noticed when I put this card up in front of the screen, it just magnifies. It's, it's beautiful. The source of the universe is a gigantic heart. Its beats are angels and beings of light. It is what many call God. It's love that is beyond gender and dogma. It's the infinite, infinite experiencing infinity. It's all that is, was, and ever will be. It's love being love and expressing love. It's an energy that can be explained but never fully comprehended. It's where we have all come from and will all return. The strangest part of all is that we've never left. 
even though we are spiritual beings having a human experience and may feel that source is separated from us, the truth is that we're always connected, even when we feel we're not. This gateway takes us not upward, but inward. It's the gateway that reminds us that through the stargate of our heart, we are connected to the heart of creation. Not only that, but we exist and express ourselves within the heart, even though we may be on planet Earth and experiencing Earth as a planet within the Milky Way. All of this and more is actually being expressed by the heart of source. The vastness of this divine love is inexplainable, but it's who we are. You are connecting directly with the heart of source, the creator of life and love. You are blessed to receive this card, for it shows the cup of your heart is being filled with love until it overflows. The divine energy that is with you now is helping you melt away any blockages so that you can be open to the love, acceptance, and appreciation that you deserve. You are being encouraged to view yourself in a loving way and give yourself permission to be loved. If you have been holding back for a while but are now ready to share the love you have within, this card lets you know it is safe to do so. You are love, loving, and lovable. Step forward, claim your worth, and enjoy a new level of spiritual openness. You are truly blessed. Yeah, we are truly blessed. We just don't realize it. We try to look at the material 3D possessions around us, feeling that we're not blessed. And we're not looking into the heart and the people around us and look how blessed we are. We need, need to redirect our 3D thoughts of existence. We got the Divine Master Oracle and we got Soptic. Cosmic Power, Unlimited Potential, Sacred Mission, Initiation. Soptic is the ancient Egyptian name for Cyrus, one of their most important stars. The Soptic is the feminine personification. Her name can be translated as triangle or sharp one. She has been depicted in many forms, most often as a woman wearing a white crown. That's interesting. We got the masculine and we got the feminine. And I keep saying we got to balance them both. Popped by a star, although sometimes she has an elongated head or a headpiece, implying she's from another world. Cyrus is the brightest star in the sky and was of utmost importance to the ancient Egyptians. In fact, our current new year was celebrated as the coming of Sophit. As during the last week of December, Cyrus can be found high in the sky between midnight and dawn. It's symbol of light and power, but also a reminder that we have all come from the stars and thus have their power within us. The energy of wishing on a star and seeing that wish come true is with you now. This is a time to push forward with any project or ideas that you feel called to carry out. You're a powerful being with unlimited potential. Don't let yourself be held back by anyone or anything. If you set your heart on something, there is no doubt that it will come to fruition because you are unlocking your star power. You are destined to shine brightly in the lifetime and all the experiences you are having at this time are in alignment with the sacred mission. There's an energy of positivity, abundance, and excitement around you now, and this will help you turn your visions into the reality you deserve to experience. I love that card. Now we got one more card. We got the Human Spirit Oracle, and we got a number 11, which is a master number, and it's the Midas Touch. You have that golden touch. You have worked hard or perhaps just inherited this amazing skill to touch all that you desire, and it turns the gold and shiny. Yours. No strings attached. Does it feel rewarding, or do you come to just expect little morsels of gold to form at your beck and call? Let's take a moment to think about instant gratification without gratitude. It is important to know your blessings and take a moment to give thanks for them. If you have more than enough, maybe consider donating monthly to your favorite cause. 
sprinkle that gold all over like glitter and let others have a blessing to give thanks for. Remember that old expressions share the wealth. This is a great time to practice that old saying. It will bring you great joy, I promise. Yeah, that's a great card, guys. We had a great reading. Loved it. Well, I hope everybody stays safe and protected out there. And I love everybody. And may every step in your journey be magical. And you know what? Just be you.